On June 10th, 2008, Sudan Airways Flight 109 was on its final approach to Khartoum International Airport after a long journey from Amman, Jordan, with a brief stop in Damascus, Syria. On board were 214 people, including passengers and crew. As the Airbus A310 touched down, the aircraft overran the wet runway, ultimately coming to rest beyond its end. Moments later, the right side of the aircraft was engulfed in flames. While many on board managed to escape, 30 lives were tragically lost in the aftermath. What caused the aircraft to overrun the runway, and why did it catch fire after landing? Today, we explore the flight files of Sudan Airways Flight 109. Hello everyone and welcome to The Flight Files. I'm your host Dan and today we are taking a look into Sudan Airways Flight 109. Before I get into the episode, if you enjoyed the podcast and want to see more, head on over to theflightfiles.com. Now, let's jump in. Sudan Airways Flight 109 was operated by an Airbus A310, which is a twin-engine, wide-body aircraft designed for medium to long-haul flights. The A310 was introduced in the early 1980s, and it became known for its fuel efficiency and flexibility in both operating domestic and international routes. The specific aircraft involved in Flight 109 had been in service for several years and had accumulated thousands of flight hours. As with many aircraft in the Sudan Airways fleet, it had undergone routine maintenance to ensure it was airworthy for the route between Amman, Damascus and Khartoum. The flight departed from Amman, Jordan, with a scheduled stop in Damascus, Syria, before continuing to Khartoum, Sudan. On board were 214 passengers and crew members, a mix of business travellers, families and Sudanese nationals returning home. The cockpit crew of Flight 109 consisted of three experienced pilots, with Captain Mohammed Hassan at the helm. Captain Hassan was highly seasoned with more than 15,000 total flight hours in his career. However, of particular importance is the fact that only a small fraction of those hours, around 3,000, were logged on the Airbus A310. While he had extensive experience flying various aircraft, his time on this particular model was notably limited compared to his overall experience. Flying alongside him were the first officer and the flight engineer, both with substantial flight hours, but like the captain, their experience on the A310 was relatively lower than on other aircraft. The first officer, with over 7,000 flight hours, to his name, was also relatively new to the Airbus A310, having accumulated only about 1,500 hours on the type. While he had significant flying experience, the challenge of flying the A310, particularly in poor weather conditions, added an extra layer of complexity to their approach into Khartoum that evening. The weather in Khartoum was notoriously unpredictable, and on the night of June 10th, 2008, conditions were far from ideal. The region had been experiencing storms, and the weather over Khartoum International Airport was characterised by strong winds, rain and low visibility, creating a challenging environment for the landing. Wet runways in Khartoum, combined with high temperatures and difficult wind conditions, often posed a risk for aircraft attempting to land under these circumstances. While the Airbus A320 was equipped with the necessary systems to assist in wet runway landings, such as auto brakes and reverse thrust, the combination of human factors, weather, and mechanical limitations were proved to be critical in what followed. Flight 109's approach to Khartoum should have been routine, but the complex interplay of pilot experience, aircraft limitations, and adverse weather conditions would soon lead to a chain of events that would result in one of Sudan Airways' most tragic accidents. As Sudan Airways Flight 109 approached Khartoum International Airport, the crew was fully aware of the challenging weather conditions awaiting them. Strong winds, heavy rain and poor visibility plagued the area, creating an already difficult landing environment. The wet runway only compounded these challenges, reducing the margin for error. At approximately 8.45pm local time, the crew received clearance for approach. As the Airbus A310 descended through the turbulent air, Captain Mohammed Hassan, with the assistance of the first officer, navigated the aircraft towards the runway. By this point, the autopilot had been disengaged and the pilots were manually controlling the aircraft, relying on their experience to handle the adverse conditions. Despite the crew's awareness of the difficult weather, the approach continued. According to the flight data recorder, the aircraft came in higher and faster than usual. As the Airbus touched down on runway 36 at 9.26pm, the wet surface immediately became a critical factor. 
the aircraft's speed on landing was excessive and with a combination of heavy rain and poor visibility, the crew had limited runway to bring the aircraft to a stop. Upon landing, Captain Hassan deployed the auto brakes and reverse thrust, essential for reducing speed on a wet runway. However, as the crew applied these systems, the aircraft's speed was not decreasing as rapidly as expected. The slippery surface combined with the high approach speed made braking less effective than under normal conditions. The A310 skidded along the wet runway, struggling to slow down. At this point, the aircraft was quickly approaching the end of the runway and the pilots realised they were not going to stop in time. Despite the full application of the brakes and reverse thrust, Flight 109 overran the runway, sliding beyond its end and into a field. The aircraft continued forward, colliding with runway lights and fencing, before coming to a halt over 215 metres past the runway's end. In the moments immediately following the runway, the situation inside the cabin was one of controlled chaos. While the passengers and crew felt the jolt of the aircraft as it came to a stop, many believed they had escaped disaster. Unfortunately, the incident was far from over. Shortly after the aircraft came to rest, a fire broke out on the right-hand side of the fuselage. The source of the fire remains a key part of the investigation, with several possible causes, including a fuel leak or damage to the engines during the overrun. The fire spread rapidly and thick smoke began filling the cabin, creating a desperate situation for the passengers and the crew. The flight attendants initiated an emergency evacuation, guiding passengers to the exits on the left side of the aircraft as the fire was concentrated on the right. Panic ensued as passengers scrambled to escape the rising flames and thickening smoke. Fortunately, the majority of passengers managed to exit the aircraft, but tragically, 30 people were unable to make it out in time. The intense heat and smoke in the cabin quickly rendered certain areas of the plane uninhabitable, trapping those in the rear sections. Meanwhile, emergency response teams at Khartoum International Airport arrived on the scene, but the fire spread too quickly for all passengers to be rescued. Despite their efforts, the fire consumed a significant portion of the aircraft's fuselage, leaving a devastating aftermath. Investigators would later note that had the fire not broken out, the overrun itself may have been survivable for all on board. The runway excursion alone caused relatively minor injuries to passengers, but it was the subsequent fire that claimed the majority of the 30 lives lost in the accident. In the aftermath of the crash, the focus turned to understanding how this fire started so soon after the overrun and whether any procedural or technical failures contributed to the blaze. The role of the wet runway and the pilot's approach speed also became central to the investigation as authorities sought to determine whether the accident could have been prevented. In the immediate aftermath of the crash of Sudan Airways Flight 109, the Sudanese Civil Aviation Authority launched a full-scale investigation to determine the cause of the accident and why the situation escalated so quickly after landing. Investigators from Airbus and international aviation safety bodies were brought in to assist, focusing on several key areas, the landing, the runway overrun, and the fire that engulfed the aircraft. One of the first aspects that investigators examined was the weather conditions at the time of landing. The heavy rain, strong winds and poor visibility significantly impacted the crew's ability to execute a safe landing. The wet runway, combined with the aircraft's higher than normal landing speed, led directly to the overrun. Flight data showed that the aircraft landed faster than the prescribed approach speed for such conditions, giving the pilot less runway to decelerate and come to a full stop. The excessive speed on touchdown left little room for error on the rain-slick runway. Further analysis revealed that while the crew attempted to use all available braking system, including the auto brakes and reverse thrust, the reduced friction on the wet runway rendered these measures less effective. The investigators found that the crew may have misjudged the level of braking power available under the wet conditions, which contributed to their inability to stop the aircraft before the end of the runway. The second major area of focus was the condition of the runway itself. Khartoum International Airport had a single main runway that was often used in wet weather conditions without a proper drainage system to reduce surface water. 
The lack of grooving, which helps water run off and increases friction for aircraft, was noted as a significant contributing factor to the runway's poor performance during heavy rains. Without sufficient drainage or grooving, water had accumulated on the surface, turning the runway into a slippery hazard for any landing aircraft. Investigators also focused on the actions of the flight crew, including the decision-making process leading up to the landing. Despite being aware of the adverse weather, the crew opted to proceed with the approach and landing. The investigation raised questions about whether the pilot should have considered diverting to another airport or executing a go-around, given the conditions. While the crew's experience was substantial, their relatively limited flight hours on the Airbus A310 may have played a role in their judgement during the final approach. The fact that Captain Mohammed Hassan had only logged around 3,000 hours on the A310 despite his overall extensive flying experience suggested that his familiarity with the aircraft in these challenging conditions was a potential factor in the accident. Beyond the landing and overrun, the post-crash fire became a critical point of investigation. The fire erupted almost immediately after the aircraft came to a halt raising concerns about the design and condition of the aircraft. Airbus engineers analysed the wreckage and determined that the fire likely originated from fuel spillage caused by the overrun. When the aircraft overran the runway and collided with objects beyond the runway's end, including lights and fencing, it is believed that the fuel tanks or lines were compromised, leading to a leak. The fire may have been sparked by the friction between the fuselage and the ground or by damaged electrical components which ignited the spilled fuel. The rapid spread of the fire was a focal point for investigators. Airbus and other aviation experts examined the aircraft's materials and design to understand why the fire spread so quickly. It was found that the emergency response teams were unable to extinguish the fire in time to prevent the tragedy though their swift actions did save many lives by helping evacuate the survivors. Despite this, the 30 passengers who perished were likely trapped by smoke and flames, particularly those seated in the rear of the aircraft where the fire was most intense. In their final report, the investigation team issued several key recommendations aimed at improving safety. Among the most significant was the call for improved runway safety at Khartoum International Airport, this included the installation of grooved runways to improve friction in wet conditions, better drainage systems, and clearer protocols for pilots landing in adverse weather conditions. The report also emphasised the importance of reviewing Sudan Airways pilot training programmes, particularly with regard to high-risk landing conditions and decision-making during poor weather. Additionally, the investigation raised awareness about the need for improved aircraft design to prevent post-crash fires. While no single factor could be blamed for the fire that claimed so many lives, the investigation highlighted the need for stronger fuel tank protection in overrun scenarios. As a result, Sudan Airways and other airlines operating similar aircraft were urged to review their emergency response procedures and improve crew training for fire situations during evacuation. In the wake of the accident, Sudan Airways faced intense scrutiny from international aviation bodies, the airline worked to implement several of the safety recommendations issued by investigators, including updating its pilot training programs and reviewing its aircraft maintenance protocols. Khartoum International Airport also made improvements to its runway conditions, though it would take years for the full recommendations to be realised. One of the most prominent issues raised by the crash was the importance of decision-making under pressure, especially when confronted with difficult weather conditions. Although the weather over Khartoum on June 10th, 2008 was severe, it was not entirely unexpected. Both the pilots and air traffic control were aware of the challenging conditions. The crew had the option to divert to another airport or execute a go-around to make another attempt at landing, but they chose to continue with the approach. This decision to land despite adverse conditions has raised important questions about how pilots assess risk and how much pressure is placed on them to adhere to schedules. Flight 109's overrun was a direct consequence of landing at a speed that was too high for the wet runway conditions. While the crew was experienced, their limited time flying the Airbus A310 may have impacted their ability to accurately gauge the landing requirements for this particular aircraft in such challenging conditions. In aviation, pilots undergo extensive training in a variety of scenarios, but their familiarity with a specific aircraft type under certain conditions 
such as wet runways or turbulence, can play a crucial role in their ability to respond effectively in real time. The relatively lower number of hours logged on the A310 by the captain and first officer compared to their overall flight experience meant they may not have been fully confident in handling the A310 in such conditions. The human factors in the Flight 109 crash are significant. The stress of landing in poor weather, the pressure to complete the flight on schedule, and the confusion caused by the wet runway all likely contributed to the decisions made in the cockpit. Stress and fatigue, particularly on long-haul flights, can impair even the most experienced pilots. When automation systems are functioning and weather is favourable, flying becomes routine. But in moments of crisis, like an unstable approach in poor weather, the need for sharp decision-making becomes paramount. Investigators identified the importance of ensuring that pilots receive continuous training in managing high-stress situations and making quick, yet effective, decisions during critical moments of flight. Beyond the human factors, the conditions at the airport highlighted the importance of proper safety measures for runways. The lack of grooving and drainage on the runway was a major contributor to the crash. Modern runways are typically grooved to allow water to drain and improve braking efficiency in wet conditions. Khartoum's runway was not equipped with these critical safety features. This ultimately made it difficult for the aircraft to slow down effectively, even with all braking systems deployed. This incident emphasised the global need for airports, especially those in regions prone to extreme weather, to implement updated runway safety protocols. Many airports in developing countries face similar infrastructure issues, which can pose serious risks to aircraft during landing in poor weather. Another important takeaway from the crash is the need for improved post-crash fire safety. In the case of Flight 109, the initial overrun did not cause any immediate fatalities, but the subsequent fire claimed 30 lives. This raised the question about aircraft design and materials, specifically how fuel tanks and fuel lines are protective in case of runway explosions or similar incidents. Investigators highlighted the need for airlines and manufacturers to evaluate the materials used in aircraft and improve protection against fires that could occur in the aftermath of an accident. The rapid spread of the fire on Flight 109 just demonstrated how quickly a survivable incident can turn deadly, especially if passengers become trapped or disorientated during an emergency evacuation, especially after a crash. Furthermore, the emergency response at Khartoum was scrutinised in the investigation, while local emergency crews responded quickly, the fire was already well developed by the time they arrived. In large-scale emergencies like this, the window for successfully rescuing passengers is incredibly narrow, often measured in minutes. The fire's intensity combined with the delayed response time meant that many passengers were unable to escape. Another layer of discussion comes from the broader aviation industry's response to the accident. The crash helped fuel a wider debate on runway safety globally, prompting many airports to revisit their runway maintenance standards, particularly in regions where weather posed a frequent hazard. Additionally, pilot training programs began emphasising more comprehensive education in handling complex landings, including go-arounds and diversions when faced with severe weather. The question of whether pilots should feel more empowered to divert when conditions are poor, even if means delaying the flight, became central to discussions around aviation safety. The crash of Sudan Airways Flight 109 not only exposed vulnerabilities in pilot training and runway safety, but also reinforced the importance of emergency preparedness and aircraft design improvements. In the years since the crash, Sudan Airways and the aviation industry as a whole have worked to address the lessons learned from this disaster. From better runway infrastructure to enhanced pilot training, the changes implemented since 2008 aim to prevent future accidents like Flight 109. Thank you for joining us as we explored the flight files of Sudan Airways Flight 109. Be sure to follow and subscribe on your favourite platform to stay updated on future episodes as we continue to explore the flight files of the aviation industry.